In this video, we'll begin to look at weather and how weather can be forecasted, predicted, and understood. So the definition of weather is the short-term condition of the atmosphere and the changes that occur within hours or days. So when we talk about weather, we're really talking about events that occur over a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, like this. This is a hurricane. Hurricanes count as a weather event. If I were to look at the average temperature for, let's say, New York State, now I'm talking about the climate because I'm really looking at a longer uh, duration, a longer term. A rain event may last a couple of hours, but if I looked at the annual rainfall for New York State, that's more of a climate look, something that lasts for a long time. So, weather, short term, climate, long term. Now, the causes of weather are varied. When we were talking about insulation, we discussed that not all the sunlight that, that's delivered gets to the surface, but of that light that gets to the surface, it's unevenly distributed amongst the uh, surface and therefore the atmosphere. So some regions are getting more than others. That was factors of insulation, depending on a lot of different things that really will control how warm you get. But because of that heat, as heat moves to balance itself out, heat's always trying to seek out the nearest sink, you know, moving from source to sink, that causes the atmosphere to change. And those changes are what cause weather. And when we talk about weather, we're really talking about specific variables. And these variables are conditions within the atmosphere that change within hours or days. And they can include temperature, moisture content, humidity, air pressure, precipitation, wind, the amount of clouds, and then finally storms. For this specific video, we'll be looking at air temperature and air pressure. So let's get started on that. So the atmospheric temperature, the temperature of the air outside, is recorded in Celsius, Fahrenheit or Kelvin. The familiar one is Fahrenheit. That's what we are used to in the United States, but elsewhere it's actually much more common and customary to use Celsius. No matter what scale you use, you're always measuring with a thermometer. That's our instrument to measure temperature. Now, to heat the air that makes up the atmosphere, of course, it involves the sun. The sun is the primary source of all energy and all heat but the atmosphere actually gets most of its heat from contacting the surface um, when the air that's surrounding the surface the the lower part of the troposphere actually touches the surface where the air and the ground meet you have conduction conduction will heat up the atmosphere so that will give heat to the air another way is something that we already talked about which is the greenhouse effect right so um, the surface is heating up and it's giving off infrared radiation Well, in the process of doing that that also heats up the atmosphere it has a warming effect another way that the air can be warmed is just direct absorption of sunlight when we talked about the atmosphere the ozone layer is the warmest layer uh, above the troposphere because of the ozone layer. It absorbs all that UV light in the stratosphere. Um, so they can directly absorb uh, sunlight and heat up. Another way that the temperature changes in the atmosphere is during phase changes like condensation. To make a cloud, water is changing from its vapor form to a liquid form. And that process, and you can check your, your reference tables on this one, um, is actually uh, an energy release of 2,260 joules per gram. I know you have no idea what a joule is, but that's a lot of energy that's being released per gram of water. All right, so that can also heat the atmosphere. And the final way that the temperature 
can go up and this is really a, a small way but it's certainly something that causes the temperature to change is the Coriolis effect when we talked about the rotation of the earth um, the swirling of winds the way that they curve causes them to kind of rub or it creates friction basically with the with the earth's surface and anytime you have friction that generates a small amount of heat so those are all of the ways that the atmosphere uh, warms up and, and retains its temperature. When it does get warm, as we spoke about before, it wants to transfer that heat. It wants to send that heat out into the rest of the atmosphere to kind of even it out, source to sink. So this is how the process works. Figure the sun is heating up the surface in this picture and we're talking about the air right above the Earth's surface. It's being heated up as well by conduction and that air is warming up and rising. As it rises, it gets to a point in the sky, in the atmosphere, where now it's too far away from the ground, it starts to cool off, it gets colder. And as it does that, it sinks back down, only to be cycled back through in this uh, current, in this cycle. We spoke about these before, this is actually called convection, the transfer of heat in a fluid like this, like this is a gas. And this is an important process because this controls the moisture content of the air, it controls the air temperature, and also creates wind patterns that blow over Earth's surface. So as you probably know, as air rises in the atmosphere, it gets colder. You've heard of that before, there's snow on top of mountains, but that's because as the air is rising, it's spreading out, it's expanding. And that expansion causes it to get colder. The air molecules actually lose heat because when they're close together, huddled up close to the surface by gravity, they can share heat and stay warmer, right? Uh, but as they go up and spread apart, they're not sharing that heat anymore. This is because the air pressure is so low upper in the upper atmosphere as you go higher and higher that the air has more room to expand so when we think about mountains that are very high in elevation high in altitude they have snow because the air up there is much colder therefore water crystallizes quicker um, so temperature uh, decreases with altitude and if I were to look at that in a graphing relationship as altitude increases, air temperature will decrease. So this is an indirect relationship. And again, referencing back to the atmosphere, we talked about this um, right there. There's the temperature in the troposphere. That line's going from 15 degrees Celsius to negative 55 degrees Celsius, which is pretty cold as you go up. All right, the other property to look at is air pressure. All right, air pressure also called barometric pressure is the pressure due to the weight of the overlying atmosphere pushing down on any given area. To measure the air pressure we use a device called a barometer. There are really two types. One's a mercury barometer. This is an aneroid barometer. They both basically do the same thing. They sense the pressure change in the air and they uh, report that. So a mercury barometer reports it using uh, like, a, like a ruler and an aneroid bar barometer has this uh, system of gears that actually, you know, put these hands in the in a place where, um, depending on the the value, it tells you if it's stormy, if it's going to rain, if it's going to change, if it's fair, it's a very dry. So, it references those um, weather events with the air pressure. Uh, either way, in your reference table, there's a scale on page 13 that shows atmospheric pressure in millibars, that's what an aneroid barometer would measure it in, and inches of mercury, which is what a mercury uh, barometer would measure it in. One atmosphere, or what we call standard air pressure at sea level, is somewhere where that dotted line crosses. To be exact, it's equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So right now, where we live, where you are, you have 14.7 pounds of air pushing down on every square inch of your body. You don't feel it because we've adapted to that. But if I were to convert one atmosphere into inches of mercury, it's 29.92 
inches of mercury or 1013 millibars so that's what one atmosphere is equal to so trying to keep that as a reference in your mind but you can always look back to the reference table to calculate that where am I going with this good question um, air pressure really is controlled by air temperature so the same thing that happened before as air is warmed up by the surface it's rising well why is it rising it's less dense air that's less dense is going to go up as it gets further away from the surface now it's gonna cool down it's gonna expand it's gonna get colder so that air is now going to contract and come back together and become more dense and as it becomes more dense it sinks back down and that's really why we have these convection currents in the atmosphere yes it's because of temperature but the temperature is changing the air pressure which causes the air to move if I substitute out less dense and more dense I can put in the words low air pressure and high air pressure because wherever the air is rising in that area if air is leaving the pressure is lower because air is not there anywhere where pressure is descending and actually coming back down to the to surface well now the air is becoming more and more compressed it's coming together we have a higher air pressure when it comes to a weather map there's the colors blue and red again the H stands for high pressure that's an area where the air is very I don't want to say cold but dry because it's descending it's it's sinking down from the atmosphere and then there are the lows the red L's which show air that's rising air that's actually moving up into the atmosphere wherever there's a high pressure system you have clear skies wherever you have a low pressure system you're dealing with some kind of precipitation or storm event and that's a very basic statement but it's true in addition to weather highs and lows will also determine the wind over regions and local areas so just reiterating what I had already said as air temperature increases air pressure decreases another indirect relationship and again looking back at our atmosphere reference table diagram we have this information again for the troposphere that the pressure in the troposphere starts out very high close to the surface but the air pressure decreases as you go up in altitude so once again as you go up in altitude air pressure will decrease and that's another indirect relationship so that's it for now thanks for watching